92.1 WROI, WROIFM.com. Streaming audio live, RTC Channel 5, audio and video soon on RTC Channel 4. That's why Scott's in the studio. Hey, Scott, how you doing? Good morning, sir. You recovered from Saturday. It was a long day in the cold. Nah, did you get uh, get enough coffee to keep you going, did you? Yeah, <laughs> Culver Coffee Company took care of me. <laughs> Excellent. Anyway, nice to have you with us. And, of course, time now for Doc Talk. On this Monday morning, General Surgeon Dr. Keith LeMay in the studio. Good morning. Good morning. Of course, we're going to talk about gallbladder. That's what we've been telling everybody about, and that is uh, an integral part of your body and things that we need to discuss. But I, as, as we kind of get started... Flu epidemic is still kind of going on. Woodlawn still has some restrictions out there, don't they? Absolutely. It's actually uh, spreading across the United States, and it's, that incidence is very high right now in this area. And we're asking everybody to take precautions, wash your hands, uh, and actually not come to the hospital unless it's actually needed, you know, as far as a visitor. Let me ask you the $64,000 question here. Do you, do you think we'll ever be able to develop a vaccine that will prevent the different strains of flu that we run into each and every year? No, the answer is no, but we do get the flu shots and they they help. And a lot of times they're made for the ones we've already seen. And because of mutations, there'll always be new ones. But when you do have the flu shot, it will, if you do get the flu, so a lot of times it's less severe. Less so we symptoms. still recommend that they be given. And part of the sad story, I guess, about the flu is how many children have died from it so far this year in the United States. Right. And that's horrible. And not much I can say about that. Right. It's, it's exactly. It's a severe strain. Okay. Well, hopefully it'll end up here pretty soon. I mean, usually about this time we're tapering off at right. the end of flu season. But, but it's at its peak seems right like, now. Yeah, still mm -hmm. going strong. All right. Gallbladder. Let's talk about that a little bit today. And by the way, uh, for our listeners, if you have a question for the program, Give us a call here at the studio at 223-6059. Well, I chose the topic of gallbladder disease today because it's very common, something we see all the time. And the gallbladder itself is an organ inside your abdomen. It's connected to your liver. And it has, it's basically a little smaller than my fist. Okay. And it's connected to your intestine. And the first question you'd ask is, well, why do you have a gallbladder? And every time you eat... Uh, what fatty foods and protein, your brain tells the gallbladder to squish and squish out some of the juices in the intestine so it can help absorb the protein and the and the fats. Okay. So especially like if you had a greasy pizza, that's when it's really going to kick in. So to make a long story short, inside the gallbladder is a fluid. And it's called bile. And it's made out of three different things. And if those concentrations get to the correct amount, you form stones. And if you have gallstones, you then start having problems. And that's why we're here to talk about gallbladder disease, which the most common would be gallstones and gallbladder attacks. Okay, let's uh, let's further pursue that because uh, there's not hardly a day goes by if somebody says, I don't have gallstones. Right. It's, uh, it occurs in about 6% of men and about 9% of women. Okay. And once you have them, you pretty much have them for the rest of your life. Uh, there are ways... Young, old people, uh, age, are any age, age groups on this? Boy, we start seeing uh, people with gallbladder problems at, in their teens. But generally, the classic would be a female, female around 40, okay. who's slightly uh, heavy. Okay. Heavy set. Okay. And so there's different terms. You can have biliary colic, which is when you have intermittent attacks of gallbladder, like the, the stones are getting caught in the duct. And when the gallbladder distends, that's what's painful. And so the first signs are called biliary colic. And it's interesting that there are really no pain nerves in your abdomen, either the intestine or the gallbladder. What causes you pain is always distension. So if your small intestines distended, your gallbladder is distended, that's what's painful, but there's no pain fibers per se. Then if those stones get caught in the duct, leaving the gallbladder and, and it starts distending, then you start having problems with bacteria. And that, that's when we start calling it cholecystitis, itis mean infection. So that's a more severe case. Then the next stage is when some of those stones 
leave the gallbladder, go down the little tube towards the intestine, and that's called cholecholelithiasis, which is a fancy word for some of those stones get caught by the pancreas, so then you get pancreatitis. So there's these problems that can get very bad with gallbladder disease. Painful. Very painful. Yeah. So the classic symptoms would be right upper quadrant abdominal pain, and we're having a bad attack. It's sharp, constant, and it radiates to the back, and that's the classic. There's all different types of symptoms for gallbladder, but that's the classic one. Can I have more than one gallstone at any one time? You can have hundreds of them. Oh, wow. Yeah, and it's amazing. You can take out these big gallbladders, and they'll have like 100 stones, wow. marbles, and it's just packed. How can we treat gallstones? Well, there's different ways. The first way, which is everybody asks, is, is there any medication for it? Exactly. And there is one medication we've had for 20 or 30 years, and it's called deoxycholic acid. And it works 33% of the time, and it takes three years of taking it, and it just, wow. it's, it's an option that's very expensive, too. So most, we don't even go down that, that way. So the more common way to deal with gallstones is to see a surgeon like surgically, yourself sure. and to surgically remove it. Okay. And in the 19... 80s, early 1990s, when we started getting laparoscopic removal of the gallbladder, it's with a TV scope, and uh, we can now remove gallbladders, same day surgery, laparoscopically. So we don't go in and just remove the gallstones themselves. We remove the whole gallbladder. The whole gallbladder, so okay. it d doesn't occur again. So, so it doesn't happen again. So we can live without our gallbladder, basically. Right, and it's like a gas tank that okay that secretes when your brain tells it to when you eat. But if you take it out, it just drips all the time. The bile goes in all the time. Okay. It, it, about one in 200 people, it causes loose stools. And as we all get older, most people get constipation. So right. in essence, it doesn't hurt most people. Right. Right. It, it, when, when the gallbladder comes out, then do you have to be more concerned about your diet? Not in particular. Okay. Just the first few weeks, we tell okay. people to watch out, but generally not. They can go back to eat anything they want. Okay. So I have, a, I'm considering, let's say I've got some pain and, and uh, talk with my surgeon and he says, well, we need to take your gallbladder out. How long or how involved a procedure is that? Well, there's different, well, all people are different. Right. And so the ones that come to the emergency room and have excruciating pain, they're having really a bad attack. Uh, usually it takes them a good week or two to get back. Okay. To normal. Okay. And then you have the office person who's having biliary colic, the mild intermittent pains with gallstones, and they can get back to a desk job in three days. Okay. The The surgery itself takes what? Is, is it inpatient? Outpatient? It's outpatient. Outpatient? Okay. Uh, less than an hour. Okay. And uh, the reason I'm here talking to you, I've done yeah. 2,600 or more. Wow. And, and that's a lot. It and is. I've worked at you know all these different hospitals through my career. And that's a good number. So Dr. Nile has done a lot of gallbladder surgeries also at Woodlawn Hospital. So if you have gallbladder problems, Woodlawn Hospital is the place to go. Okay. Are there such a thing as cancers of the gallbladder? Yes, there are. They're very rare. Okay. Very rare. And through all these years, I've seen maybe one or two. If you do get them, they're a very bad prognosis. I would think so. Yeah, that's that's not it's good. It's not like colon cancer or right, something you have a right. chance. It's usually will take your take your life. Are there other gallbladder diseases that are I mean we've talked about the gallstones and things. Are there other ones other diseases that might affect the gallbladder? Uh there are some associated diseases you can have polyps okay. in, in your in your gallbladder which act like stones and get caught. Um there are problems with the bile ducts and where it goes in the intestine and those type of disease processes uh, act like gallbladder disease, but sometimes you need a GI doctor to put a scope down and fix it a different way other than removing your gallbladder. So oh, I've, I've got a little pain down in there. When do, I, when do I think it's bad enough to come see the doctor? It, with most things in life, when it's lifestyle limiting. Okay. So I, when it's just bugging you too much. I like that. That's mm -hmm. a good way to say it, when it's lifestyle limiting. Yep. Yeah. And so then I come see the doctor. So uh, 
do I go to a GI doctor? Can I go to a G general practitioner first? How do we how well, do we most, start the process? Yeah, most of the cases that come to my office come through the family practitioner the, or your primary care physician, and they will do an ultrasound. That's the most common way to diagnose gallstones. Not everybody who have who has gallbladder problems have stones. There's some people who have a dysfunctional gallbladder, and there's tests such as a HIDA scan, which is a nuclear scan that we do, and it shows the function of the gallbladder. An ultrasound shows stones, but a HIDA scan will show how the gallbladder contracts and the function. So younger kids in high school have right upper quadrant and down pain when they eat and have no stones. Many of them will get a HIDA scan first before the ultrasound. Or people in their 40s or 50s who have classic symptoms of gallbladder disease and have an ultrasound that's negative will get a HIDA scan. Dr. Keith Thome is our guest on Doc Talk. He's a general surgeon. And I, I, in listening to you and in listening to you talk about these particular tests and how they were done, I often wonder, how does a doctor today keep up with all the changes in technology that are coming your way every day? Well, there's a lot of training to get to our point. Uh, you have, first you go to college for four right. years, <laughs> medical school for four years, sure. surgical training for five years, and then uh, once you're out, you get 60 hours of training a year. So, uh, education. Are you so impressed with the way the technology is changing in terms of surgeons, in terms of surgeries? Technology in medicine is really yes. progressing. In surgery, it's a slower boat. Okay. I and mean, we have... Some advancements, uh, obviously robotics right now, but uh, I, to be honest, there's not major advancements in general surgery, okay. but it's slowly. Let me ask you a loaded question. Is Woodlawn Hospital a good place for me to come to have my surgery? Absolutely. There's no reason, absolutely no reason to go to another hospital, a tertiary center, a big town for most surgeries that you need. We can take care of most of them. And then you say, well, well, what, why wouldn't you, or what things would cause you not to go to Woodlawn Hospital? That would be if you have, if you need dialysis, if you need a neurosurgeon, uh, if you're having a major heart attack. So there's a few things, but otherwise Woodlawn Hospital is the place to go. Okay. And you, uh, do you need to have a doctor's referral, a GP's referral before you get involved in a surgical procedure? No, you can come straight to our office. Okay. Uh, you don't need a re referral. It used to be that way in the olden times, but not now. Where are you located? I'm located on the second floor at the hospital. All right. And everybody knows where we're at. <laughs> <laughs> right out at that end of town, right? Yep. Dr. Keith Obey, our guest today, talking about gallbladders and uh, gallbladder diseases. Anything else you'd like to add, pass along? No, uh, I appreciate the time right. here. Thank and, you. And uh, I guess uh, one more thing. Sure. Uh, I want to talk about pregnancy. There, uh, oh, okay. when, when women are pregnant, there's a high incidence of gallbladder attacks. And uh, that is something that can be dealt with uh, surgically and Actually, there's no higher chance of pre-labor uh, problems, and you should consider seeing a surgeon when you're having gallbladder attacks during pregnancy. I think that's a, I think that's a good thing to note because uh, a lot of women do have that issue. Yes. All right. And, and you'd rather not uh, have the fetus go through the stress of these gallbladder attacks and the infection. Okay. Dr. Thome, as always, thanks very much. Good information today. We All appreciate right. it. Great. Thank you. mirrors. They show us all of our problem areas. Those that we can't wish or squish away. Now you can fear no mirror and eliminate those problem areas with cool sculpting. This safe and patented technology targets fat cells with no surgery and no downtime. It's time to eliminate stubborn fat. Call Woodlawn Hospital Surgical Department to schedule your consultation today. Online at woodlawnhospital.com.